Oh, is this testing? Hi. This. Maybe I should. Oh yeah, there we go. We have the title. Hmm. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Ah, oh, great. Jose is having problems. Ah, man. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm away for a moment. Uh, see you later. Okay, I don't know if we should just kind of start. Uh, there's a number of things that I'd like to talk about in a very unstructured way. Um, oh, there's some echo. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Leo? Yeah. Is that you? Maybe. Maybe uh, we, we try to mute if. Uh, not talking. Okay. Well, let's wait for Martine to come back and then let me start. Can, can you guys hear me clear clear enough? I'm just using the the built-in. Ah, perfect. Mm, generally, my sound in Gaza Town is horrible, but I don't know if it's my problem. Yeah. Also, you you have a couple of pops when you're speaking. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm just going to start. We're already 15 minutes in. Um, welcome, guys, to the Riot uh, testing breakout session. Now, I don't have all these slides and fancy things prepared. Uh, I have this uh, HackMD where I'd like to take some notes. Uh, the purpose of this is to kind of share the things that I'm working at and uh, and uh, understand what everyone else is working at because, uh, as it's been mentioned, sometimes we have some kind of fractured. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no fire, but I have the nice Peter Peter posters. <laughs> um, I, uh, so we have some fra fractured efforts. I don't think it's actually as uh, fractured as um, it, it might seem, but uh, it would be good if everyone can kind of start working together and uh, kind of doing effective, uh, making effective process in testing. So, uh, if you guys want, you can uh, click the HackMD link and uh, edit and add things yourself. Um, but uh, maybe maybe we'll get started with, with this. I'll, I'll go through the topic. So we'll talk about some of the problems that we have. I already a little bit mentioned that. Uh, I want to kind of explain what I've noticed in em the, with the emulation that's going on right now uh, and some kind of crazy ideas and how we get that working uh, more in Riot. Uh, I'll do a brief overview of the different testing repos that we have in Riot, and I'm sure there's more things out there that I'm unaware of. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the CI because it's becoming increasingly uh, important, and uh, I think in embedded development generally, um, and we have a number of efforts going on uh, to provide nice CI services. Uh, some testing interfaces, and this gets more into the like how to write a test and how to write the test firmware. 
um, and do it in a clean way. Um, maybe we talk a little bit about how to display the information. I'm more interested in uh, collecting the test output, the artifacts, and maybe filtering them or, or something like that so we could see some trends and, and making it easy to compare, say, a PR versus master uh, what to look at. Uh, and some maybe some tools to help with that. I'll talk a little bit about future work uh, and uh, we can listen to uh, Francisco's uh, talk about uh, run your own tests based off uh, Gaetan's work and just maybe some experiences there. All righty. So oops. Uh, it seems like uh, at one point I was saying, oh, we don't have enough testing tools. We don't have, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's unpleasant to, to write tests. We need more infrastructure around, around there. And the, the biggest thing, and I see this also with myself, is that people don't like to write tests. And if you do write a test, it's usually you're the developer saying, okay, here's the test. Please run this test and look for success. And, you know, some, some, some tests are just print success. Um, yeah, I mean, they're a little bit more that goes into that. But uh, I think one of the issues is that we have some really highly skilled, highly specialized uh, developers here, and they try to provide as best they can tests for themselves. But you always will suffer from this tunnel vision. Uh, you know, I see, I, I see this feature in this way, and, and maybe somebody else who understands it uh, might be able to you know, ap approach it from a different angle and maybe add some testing that could prevent some some uh, bugs that occur from the tunnel vision. It's a little bit hard in Riot because some there's some people that you, it's they're they're the only one that understands these features in that detail, and it becomes yeah. You know. So how do we get around this? Would be a nice uh, uh, issue to tackle. Um, I don't know if anyone has has comments again. Like, I, maybe we can talk about this now. Yes. No. Should I just keep keep going? We know these are problems. Okay. Um, so I've been looking a little bit at some emulation things. Uh, from what I've seen, there's Renode QMU. Uh, we have Native, of course. Um, and there's some other things. At one point, Jumper.io seemed promising, but it's, it's dead. You, I think their website's just gone. I'm sure that it was a startup that failed, something to that. I looked at uh, Renode, and I really like what they're trying to do. Uh, obviously, it's open source, but it's not really like uh, we love open source community. It's it, it, For them, it seemed to have made sense to make it open source. Um, they support multi-nodes, daughter boards, environment control stuff. Uh, and the, the core of it, or the majority of the boards and the features that you can play around with uh, can be done and implemented in Python, though the, uh, they have Renode infrastructure uh, on GitHub. Uh, you, you can check it out. Um, it's in C Sharp, and I don't know how you... How, how we feel about you know adding this this other foreign language uh, in there. Uh, we have support in Riot for one of one of the boards, and I tried to add some support for other boards, but uh, for the STM F4 F1, uh, it didn't work out too well because the RCC module wasn't implemented in Renode, and uh, it basically in Riot um, we tried to assert that it must be a specific state when you turn on, say, the PLL. And uh, they acted around with a Python script, actually, that basically said, every time you write to the RCC register, uh, just flip the bits. And because the state that we were looking for was a one and a zero, a two, two, two bit, um, it, would never, it would never actually reach that state. But in master, they have a properly theoretically properly working RCC module for the F4. So as soon as they release what they have, uh, I'll try to get that in and we can use some, some more emulation. <clears throat> One of the ideas I also had is uh, I've been working on this thing called which is 
mainly to test uh, peripherals um, and and have some physical thing to uh, to interact. I would like to get it well simulated, and then we can do some maybe uh, uh, emulated connections between Philip and uh, Riot boards and use the test bed that we have to confirm that the simulations behave the same as the um, uh, that be, they behave the same as uh, what, what actually runs on the uh, test bed. <laughs> so that was my idea. I also know about QMU and we have some support in Riot for that, but uh, I don't know how well or how easy it is to add and adapt. I think with Riot, it wouldn't be that hard to to build on, uh, or sorry, with uh, Renode, it wouldn't be that hard to build on top of it for the features and things that we need. Both Renode and QMU support in last yep. one? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know, but I mean, <clears throat> we have one board that works in Riot, and, and I, 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 they need more work. They need more support for us to, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a little bit what I thought. And I thought also QMU is more for the yeah calculations, more CPU based, not so much hardware uh, uh, peripheral based. Although I'm sure uh, QMU is nice, um, well, it emulates most of the uh, not interface related peripherals. Um, I think the main disadvantage is that it is not cycle accurate. Okay, it, so it it has to adhere to the Linux scheduler, and I noticed that, for example, with the Risk Five uh, QMU support, yep. that the timers of timer tests don't succeed because the time there's too much uh, variance in the timer results. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'll also check that out for Renode, I guess. Sorry, bear with me. Um, yeah, but I mean, the idea is that we can use some emulation and <clears throat> really help improve the, the the testing. And I mean, I released Philip a while ago, and I don't think anybody's maybe a few people tried plugging it in with maybe me over their shoulder pointing at them. And it's really, yeah, wiring is a pain. Wiring is a pain. And if we can somehow get accurate testing without having to worry about wiring, I think that's a step in a the right direction. Now, uh, we also have native. Um, and I think we can maybe add more support. I thought that there was some even GPIO toggle uh, PR, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. Maybe I was just dreaming that, that uh, you, you I think there's a pull request, or maybe even merged. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe it got merged. So, I mean, <clears throat> it's growing. Um, I, I'd, and I think. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, I think. Uh, I mean, this is also what uh, the the kind of the go to for emulation, even though it's not really an em emulation. Uh, but lots of times, uh, again, with the peripherals that I'm, I'm more concerned about the peripherals, it doesn't point out the problems that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a, a question that, uh, can we, can we somehow make native look even more like a board with the, you know, dev TTY blah, um, yeah, the problem is if the bootstrapping for that then might require some permissions on the host system. Um, yeah, so that, and actually, you basically you could do it. I just remember because you could uh, start the um, well, not like a real board, but um, you can run um, native. If, I don't know when when this was last tested, but you can run a native with a TCP socket as uh, as a uh, as the output, and then connect, for example, PyTerm via TCP 
uh, and then basically at least the front end behaves like a normal board. Tool integrated tool in Riot where you can say make native or with feature. Uh, yeah, maybe I mean, not. At, at least for the networking part, that's basically what I'm currently working on on with ten percent or something like that, yeah. uh, where I um, rework the setup network script and tap setup script and basically try to unify them a bit, um, so that. Uh, we basically, at least for the network setup side, from the host machine to the node, we have a, a similar um, a similar um, accessing mode and also uh, like getting addresses, setting addresses on the tab interface. That's all those all the stuff is basically streamlined, and we don't have all these. Uh, uh, uh extra cases for native and for tap and ton and uh yeah uh, yeah improving there i mean it 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 also looks like there's the prs to s somehow support some some type of peripherals and good um the Yeah, there's always set the devil in the details, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, anyways, the, I, does anybody have anything else to say? I mean, there's uh, some PR for oh, sorry, some PR for 64-bit support, um, but I think it's not too bad just to install the 32-bit packages on the 64-bit machines. Or uh, am I am I yeah, that is getting less, more and more of a problem because some are not available anymore in the newest Ubuntu, for example. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I had that. I have the newest Ubuntu, and again, it was just some, some okay, install this this package, and but now I it think works. there's like this lip socket can, which is not available anymore. Yeah, okay. So then we should really be putting some effort uh, into this. I have like one thing for the emulated boards. Mm -hmm. um, they 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 are usually the emulation is incomplete for 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 multiple reasons. For example, in Quemo, the the micro bit support does not include the radio. So I think what I was thinking or what was I was planning was actually to 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 split those boards because a lot of the micro bit tests actually ask for that radio to be present and they will all fail in the Quemo emulation. So if we would add like a micro bit Quemo board. We can have a different set of features supported by that board, and then different run different kinds of set tests. That might be something to to manage that the emulation is not complete. One of the biggest uh, issues that I have with em emulation is that you it, it's never complete, or if it's complete, it doesn't match the hardware. Um, I think I, I have some points uh, further in the list on on how to do that, but yeah. That also could be just adding a, adding a separate virtual board or something might be a quick solution. Certainly, um, do you, yeah. If we do that too much, is it going to negatively affect the build times? Do you think on the CI, Casper? Uh, yeah, yeah. With our current build system, <laughs> well, yeah, because every new board adds to the number of ports, adds a couple hundred builds. But I guess that would be worth the price if we would have actual, I don't know, code coverage for most of the code base. Yeah, uh, so um, maintaining the emulator is is also an issue. This is why we want to kind of piggyback off of uh, some some other people. All right, we, we, we don't want to do the emulator ourselves. We see with with native, that's kind of what what it is. Um, but we I, I imagine if we really want to adopt this uh, the, uh, other emulators properly, we will need to put some effort into at least pushing the the, the emulation, whether it's Renode or QMU uh, community to to support more of that. And something tells me that Renode 
is a little bit more accepting of of this than Kiromu, but I also don't know that much about Kiromu. Um, I think from the Eclipse guys, adding much more board support. Um, but this is it's a bit stalled because Kiromu only um, supports, I think, three or four boards with our class of CPUs. Ones, it seems. Um, I'm trying to find it right now, um, but there was also like um, not not Kuimo or um, or uh, uh, yeah uh, or or uh, uh, Renote, but there was actually a web emulation of a MSP430 that I found. I try to find it. <laughs> ah, here I have it. <laughs> I actually have it in my history. <laughs> You are muted. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Yet no, not not anymore. Oh, oh, good. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm going to go through this list, clean it up, and then really try to uh, once we have all the information here, uh, send it off. So I don't know, maybe put some issue or RDM or something like that, so that uh, we we can uh, we can all have a clear understanding of the state of things. Um, the integration with the CI, I think this is also a little bit what we uh, talked about. Uh, with, let's say, um, the CC2538DK that Reno uh, is working on with, with Riot, is it somehow running tests, like native is running tests on the CI? And if not, how easy would it be to uh, get it to that state? I think this is also a Casper question. Them to somehow really integrate the, you know, yeah, this board is emulatable. Yeah, no. Is this going? Oh, come on, I think. I I think it's not too bad. Maybe I do a, a PR tracking issue to um, to somehow standardize this. Just put that in. Okay. Um, yeah, and connecting connecting boards. Uh, I talked a little uh, briefly about this, but it would be really nice if we can if we have uh, emulated daughter boards, or in this case, fill up, or so 
uh, to remotely connect so that we can actually get some nice, say, driver uh, emulated driver testing done. Uh, because I really think that we we it, it's a a very hard uh, challenge to properly test all the drivers that we support in Riot because not only would you need the hardware uh, and for it to be connected up right, uh, it, it's oh yeah, that's that's the problem. You need the hardware and for it to be connected up right, and sometimes you can't get that hardware. Somebody you know ob obsolete or, or or whatever. But if we can get some emulation of it, I think it'll be a little bit more stable. Okay, that's emulation. Now we talk about the testing repos. So for those of you that don't know, in Riot, we have now 412 tests, which, great, that's 412 binaries that you have to build for each board. It, it's pretty crazy. Now the tests for actual boards, and uh, I mean, it's getting run on nightlies, um, at least for the for, for uh, select boards in the uh, by Murdoch. Um, they are about 200 tests, which means you flash 200 times, and the minimum kind of guaranteed amount of flashing that you can do is uh, 10,000. Uh, cycles, maybe 50,000 typically. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that it could be a little bit of an issue. Uh, I don't, uh, Casper, how stable has the um, uh, has the Pi fleet been for you with, uh, with flashing? Um, as far as I know, only one ESP somehow doesn't work anymore. Other than that, you know, you know the results. The NRFs are becoming flaky, so I took them out, but I can't really say why. Could be a flashing issue. Problems with the NRF stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know if if this is if this is a problem. If we need to start thinking about maybe combining uh, tests. Yeah. Are there any examples of continuous? One thing that's that that would be rather easy to do. Um, but changes the, the software under test is um, there's like a way to not actually flash the stuff, but um, copy to memory and run from memory that um, requires um, changing. Sorry, there's a, there's, there's a question uh, about, uh, about yeah. ex examples of continuous hardware test benches. I mean, we at Riot have, have that. Um, we have uh, or, or use that. Um, Hello. Oh, tooling. Oh, tooling. Huh? Hello, can you hear me now? Got another drop. Okay. Quickly, oh, um, I'm not sure if you mentioned the map hmm. layer below. Uh, what would be the plan to, to integrate it to, to write the I menu? Have you checked, uh, hey guys, sorry, we have a little bit of conflict in the office. Of Here, I don't know, Martin, <laughs> somebody, don't know maybe you can. Uh, uh, have you checked how you would do it in Riot? Say, uh, say, say, say some things, or maybe Casper can say some things about uh, Murdoch, because I know that you're working on it quite a bit. Just kill this time. What was that? Yeah, sorry. It's uh, can can, can everyone still hear me? Uh, I got disconnected. Are, are there any examples of doing continuous integration with hardware test benches? Um, it's a question, are there examples of it, continuous integration with hardware yeah. test benches? Yes. Well, I think Philip does said no. Isn't that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, you're talking about my Philip, not Philip Bloom. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, we, we have at Riot a, a hill, um, hill running uh, nightlies and some PRs. It's more peripheral testing. Uh, I can... I. I link maybe the the results i mean murdoch runs on hardware the the set of riot tests and 
Philip runs a set of these robot framework tests, which are much smaller. So I will add it here. Um, and it's not just Riot that does that. Embed has their test bench. Uh, Zephyr, I think, has their test bench. There's this kernel CI that's being run uh, for Linux. So uh, yeah, people do use hardware. But generally, from what I've seen, it's, it's, it's a challenge to manage this uh, these hardware test benches. It definitely takes takes a lot of resources. <clears throat> Is that uh, is there a way that you can change the room? Because I can hear Jose really loud in the background. Can, you get, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Ah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stand in the hall, I guess. Oh my God. <laughs> Come over to us. Just kick Jose out. <laughs> Let him stand in the hall. This is not a breakout session; it's a dropout session. <laughs> I don't hear Kevin now. I hear him in in the hall talking, but not. <laughs> Your proxy. <laughs> Does anyone hear him else here? No, I can't hear okay. Kevin. No. Apparently he doesn't hear us. <laughs> so is there someone from Hamburg here that can tell uh Kevin, physically, that we can't hear it. <laughs> yeah, it. <laughs> There's something in the background, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lotte. This is a dropout session. Jose is still pretty loud. I don't hear you <laughs> on the phone. I just hear you from. Oh, yeah. You don't use your mic. Uh, hey we can hear you okay good 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 i'm going to try to keep as much distance from people as possible um sorry so I said something about um, the the test beds that we have and the test beds that uh, that are uh, other uh, similar OSs use. Uh, is, does that answer your question? That was asked. I don't know how long ago. Yeah, uh, I, I got some fragments. But I think um, I, I can look at those other projects. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, also one day. Hey about uh, yeah, bigger hardware like national instruments or uh, using open tap or that kind of stuff. But I think that's out of scope now. I haven't looked into that yet. Um, okay, so let's see, test repos. Again, we have uh, the Riot repo that has a whole bunch of tests. We have the Robot Framework uh, repo, which is more for the peripheral testing, API-based things. And, and those tests are the things that interface to Philip, uh, which is this slave device that can kind of confirm that the physical interactions are happy, happening uh, the way that we want them to. Um, 
And we have now the release specs testing, which is fully automated, largely due to Martine. And she'll say largely due to other people too, um, like Gitan and Francisco. Uh, it's really nice uh, effort. And it uh, the, the release testing runs weekly. Is that correct? Um, yes. So um, I can post the link actually. Um, if I find it. Um, so basically, there's this. Um, I, I talked about this yesterday at the VMA already. Um, there's this uh, link where um, there is basically, um, if you uh, click on one of the tests, you can see the um, workflow file, uh, which is, um, for example, this one. Uh, so there you can see where, when it's run. So there's a cron job for it that is, is run every Saturday at 3 a.m. And every time there is a tag pushed with a special format, which is the format our release tags are in. And then you can also use this workflow dispatch, which is um, when you uh, go to the action itself, there is this run workflow dropdown um, where you can basically pick a ver Riot version and a release specs version and then uh, just run it uh, by starting it. So if you want to, for example, have something where you think maybe I should run the release on that, you can just run it in the web interface. So uh, I guess we could continue. Um, we talked a lot about CI. Uh, CI is pretty important. We have uh, at, in Riot, the, the majority of the heavy lifting is done by Murdoch, which is a customized tool by Casper that is really efficient and uh, kind of it's built for this purpose. Um, but there are a lot of uh, tests that need to be, or a lot of builds that it takes care of. Uh, it does take care of testing as kind of a, a bonus, but again, that's native uh, and uh, whatever uh, uh, whatever boards are connected to the Pi fleet that Casper has. But it's still, what was it, 75K jobs I, I saw in the, it, 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 takes, it takes a while. Um, and I think also maybe I'd let Casper say some more words about this because you you are doing some work on it. I know. Uh, I don't know when when we can see the results. Yeah. So um, I mean, Murdoch is a, it's basically a bunch of scripts, um, and um, the deployment is not very flexible. So. Um, being pushed by Kevin, I started like making it, um, like dockerizing it, and I'm almost done with this. The idea is that right now it takes probably a day of sifting through bad documentation to set up an instance of Murdoch, and I want that to be something that can be done in five minutes or less by like shooting like by a Docker Compose file, and um, that is super necessary because Murdoch does has some bugs or some inadequacies or is missing some features, and um, they're very they're they're being pushed best to fix those but it's like extremely difficult to, to test that because yeah well you need to set up all these scripts so um very soonish we'll have like a way to spin up docker instance murdoch instances really fast and with soonish i'm like it's like days away i would say very nice so we can we can start making some uh progress there and i think it i I mean, if I'm not correct, it's also nice if uh, some other people can start maybe contributing. I know uh, Leo, who has some front end experience, uh, or some web design experience, might make it a little bit nicer to view the output of Murdoch and add in that lazy loading type type stuff, so that it doesn't take forever to, you know, when you click on the what failed. Anyways, um, so what we use for the uh, the Hill CI uh, with Philip connected is Jenkins. Um, I will say that 
my experience with it, and I'm not a, you know, a pipeline kind of guy, um, it was a little bit challenging to get it to do the things that I wanted it to do. Um, and sometimes it would take quite a while. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously still kind of learning how to, how to get this done. And there was some quite painful things when I, when I was uh, trying to deploy this on Jenkins, but it is a, uh, it is a pretty um, complex uh, thing. Oh, geez. Uh, complex thing that we're trying to uh, accomplish. Uh, and I will show So you can see the Jenk, uh, the the hill test results uh, in the CI page or the nightly's page. You click on the the hill, um, and then you can kind of go dig down into it. But the actual testing gets done in here, Jenkins, and this is the pipeline. And it's yeah, it's a little bit challenging because you have parallel nodes all running tests. Some tests aren't run some some have uh, problems like uh, in, in this case flashing problems um, and then all the all the tests fail and you have to kind of handle all that in, in some way um, yeah Jeez. Um, so this is the effort that I have put in this is my experience with Jenkins uh, if people know any alternatives, I mean, I also see some GitHub action things that are pretty nice. Um, uh, yeah, I only have one screen. Um, yeah. I think that it is. The, the, the benefit of Jenkins is that yeah, it's an open source uh, uh, tool designed for all of this. Um, and there's lots of plugins. There's plugins for almost anything you can imagine. Now, there's also a uh, paper CI, and maybe we can skip to Francisco. And I'm going to try to get back to my seat now that things are quiet. Um, and he could talk a little bit about what has been done there.
Okay, thank you very much. Oh man, can nobody hear me? Oh, okay, <laughs> thank God. Uh, it's getting a little bit late. There's actually a lot more that I wanted to talk about and I was really hoping to get uh, some, some uh, input. So Francisco, you were talking a little bit about uh, that it's hard to parse through the, the information. I think the riot control uh, stuff that Martin has been working on uh, should help with that. A, a, a real quick show of hands. Uh, it, it, do we think that this is a way to move forward? It's already in, in there. I think it's really well done, uh, the riot control. Should we just start in uh, like adding in more, uh, I guess, wrappers? Well, well, I mean, basically, right, um, right control is just a wrapper around uh, uh, what we are doing, basically doing the same that test runner does. So um, when it comes to like just checking the output of some application, I would either use test runner or the, uh, the, the right com control component of that. When it comes to real interaction with the node, like uh, having some shell command typed in and then passing the output of that, then write control really has the uh, is, is quite powerful because it comes with all these shell parses. Um, so uh, yeah, but in the backend, it uses both just just pxpec. Yeah, and and. All there's also an issue with, um, the, to be quite honest, with write control uh, with the shell parser. If for some reason prompt isn't shown, um, then you easily can run into an error. Or if if the prompt character shows up in your uh, shell output, uh, for example, if you have a help text and you use uh, the 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 um, the, uh, the lesser than equal uh, less lesser or greater than symbols for marking out something, um, some variable in your help text. Uh, currently, the shell interaction will pass this as a, as a, as a shell prompt and, um, and, and that can lead to a problem. But maybe that we can fix it by having a more dedicated shell prompt like, uh, uh, like the wrapper wrapper that is used underneath actually does like having some uh, some magic string that identifies the uh, uh, shell prompt. But yeah, that's, that's just an improvement that uh, the shell uh, interaction still needs. Also, a little bit brings me to uh, this idea of test, uh, test interface firmware. Um, I um, haven't so with the robot framework i've been trying to play around with this idea of how do you write proper proper tests uh something so that it's not just a printf statement uh, but if you want to get data it kind of knows how to format this and i have this rdm i started a while ago and i think is maybe now that i've played around with all of this uh can use some looking at but maybe some key players in here could we could maybe meet uh, at some other time or or uh, talk uh, talk on that RDM comment on that RDM about uh, how to how to do this? So yeah, uh, I have a module that I will port into Riot as soon as things aren't so messy. And I mean, it's just something that takes a little bit of time and love to, to get this. But the idea is that instead of writing printf commands, you have some structured way that you can kind of change the back end. So in, in, in this case, I use J JSON, but ideally you would just have a different type of parser. Uh, and maybe you want a binary parser to reduce the total size of the tests. And you wouldn't actually have to change your test because I'm printing command of the test or I'm printing uh, you know, a dictionary or a value uh, instead of me print printing everything without structure. Um, 
I would like to see that added. That makes total sense. I mean, maybe you're aware that the, like um, I just added to write to Murdoch that it actually can parse like these kind of test results by parsing JSON strings out of the output of the test, which is used for collecting metrics. And then the metrics get all collected from all the tests that are run into one big JSON file with all the metrics, which is really nice. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. What I was thinking about this, um, like um, abstracting this out is, um, I think what you're showing right now is like a compile time switch, whether to use to output it in JSON or print it. And I think we should make that a runtime switch. Okay. It it would mean that we carry around the baggage of the JSON formatting and the normal formatting, which I think is not that big, probably. It's a probably constant overhead or something. But it would allow us to not compile differently for CI and for manual testing. So the idea would be that all the shell tests um, probably come with a command saying uh, switch to JSON and uh, well, CI would just do that so that you have JSON output that can be where the output can be automatically parsed. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but I think for me, it would be nice to have to not have different compilations for CI testing and for local testing, because otherwise yeah. we end up in a position where, where we are like, yeah, I can't produce locally. Yeah, did you try the JSON output, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did you provide it with JSON output? Ah, now everything changes, you know? So it would be nice to have the same binaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, having two different output modes, maybe we could even like do something else and um, just um, push all these kind of results, which are usually a string and a number, probably, um, push them to some kind of buffer, and then at the end of the test, print them all at once in JSON or something like this. Yeah, yeah. To so even to wow. even to have like a human readable version that is printed right away, so the user gets a clue. Right. Maybe we even decide that JSON is human readable enough, fish. <laughs> you know? because if there's like a halfway pretty printed one line JSON with one value, yeah. I can read this result. It doesn't need to look prettier. It's like you know. So I think this is like a point to keep in mind that we try not to diverge from what we're using for testing and what we're using for manual testing, automated testing and manual testing. So I, I mean, fr from this, I, I, I kind of I was really hoping to see where I could focus the the efforts on, but it, it, it's it seems like this is something that is needed. Does anybody else agree? Disagree? I think Seaboard is not usable. Uh, yeah, uh, the, there there will be details, but okay, good, very good. So some conclusion at least. Get my ass in gear. Um, the last, the last thing that I, uh, you know, there's lots that I'd like to talk about, but I don't want to keep people from from lunch. Um, the last thing that I would like to bring up is I have this test bed. It has a lot of different boards. We use it pretty much only for nightly, so it's kind of a dedicated nightly uh, machine. I want to open it up to other maintainers to run specific commands. I think Cohen was asking, hey, can, can we use the test bed for DMA, uh, testing this new DMA SPI stuff? Uh, but it needed, uh, you know, this feature's provided. But I mean, I think it would be really good to somehow open, open this up to users so they can just, or not users, maybe maintainers, so that you have a little bit of like, you're not going to abuse it. Um, uh, what do what do people think about it, and is there any suggestions on how to do that? It's an awesome idea, and I think we should. First I want of to all, do I think it was it is already very nice. I now have a very nice um, Dell over Kevin access where I can just type in what I want in a GitHub comment, and uh, magically I get a response with output from the test bed. Um, I think it's useful to have this. I'm not sure if there should be a GitHub action to trigger it or um, something along those lines. But it would be nice to have an interface where we can say test this branch um, on the, the, the hardware and loop stuff. Yeah, I guess that's also on, on the list. Um, <clears throat> right now, how I think I would do it is Jenkins has a plugin, and you know, you basically it'll it'll scan, I guess, for some specific comments, and then it can run these tests. Uh, is does anybody have a better idea, or maybe a little bit more versatile idea? Because I think sometimes 
I think I have to define all these parameters. Maybe maybe there's ways around that though. Uh, well, one way would be to use to reuse the paper CI SSH hacks and allow maintainers to log in and then somehow reserve one of these nodes and then use it as a local node. H keys uh, stored as a secret, which is basically um, encrypted uh, in the cloud then. And then basically that is how we access a, a test bed that there is a there is an SSH private key for the IoT lab account that uh, account uh, that, that um, logs in to that uh, to to the front end of the IoT lab. Set up uh, SSH access. I mean, one one of the issues that I have with the SSH access is that um, I don't want any conflicts. And right now it's like, okay, hey, Jose, are you using the bed? Okay, good. I guess I can use it. Um, I don't know if there's also some way. This is why I said Jenkins, at least there's some scheduling done in Jenkins, maybe also with GitHub Actions. Uh, Murdo can also do that, like the scheduling. Yeah. I think with, well, you could, can do something with, like, with scheduling in GitHub Actions, I, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But, uh, a remote board by SSHing, but then you still have like the make test, make flash, and and so features, right? Like the make file targets, they map to the remote board, uh, nodes. Yeah, and I think those wrappers, um, because um, those wrapper would be rather easy to integrate in, in at least the, the Murdoch CI because all the the PyFleet they have SSH access already. Just need to add the key. And um, then every node that's connected there could be made available to every maintainer using this SSH wrapper. There's just the, the, the thing of um, scheduling them again. And um, the, the, the thing is that once that is working, whatever bot we have to listen for GitHub comments telling us to, hey, please run this test on that board, can reuse that infrastructure. I think this is something we should somehow do here because the way I see it, we have like three or four different CI systems um, and solving the same issues. And uh, this is to me a bit painful <laughs> because I think it's just a waste of time. So I think we should like maybe not solve the same issues multiple times, um, but try to maybe converge on this. I mean, I do understand that people have preferences. I do certainly have very opinionated preferences, but I'm willing to give up on those in order not to waste time, right? I think maybe we have find we should more like as a meta thing conclude that we should maybe solve the same issues multiple times because um i do understand for example that um that paper ci was was built so you can just easily um run tests on the boards you have at hand but um the, the first steps are pretty easy but then you want to add multiple boards and you're probably solving the issue of like okay how how do i figure out which board is connected where and how do i maybe now schedule access and how do I do this and how do I do that? How do I put it in the Docker container? And those are all issues that, that have been solved or not for, for Murdoch already. And I think now the same comes up with, uh, with these GitHub actions. And um, maybe, maybe this is just like, like, my, like my impression of it, but I think what we don't have is like maybe a wiki page or some documentation or something of like which problems have been solved, how by which of our CI systems. And I don't, it, there's an issue in having multiple of those, but um, I think that the issues that need to be solved are very similar. So I think we should like converge on reusing solutions. You know, find doing this stuff and, uh, but uh, yeah, okay, that I can unmute myself. Provisioning in. Yeah. Um, yeah, pr provisioning 
for pay for CI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually uh, something that I was thinking about as well. You you add you add the make file. Uh, you add just with make a way to to access this stuff, and then you don't have that complexity in Jenkins setting up the node or Murdoch. It, it's it's just just uh, somehow usable. Um, or maybe that's awesome. that's not what she was talking. About. Either way, I, I think we're we're a little bit running out of time. There are uh, some things that we kind of can conclude and areas where we should move forward. Um, yeah. I would suggest um, we're using the the forum, the discourse instance that is going to be online soonish, and um, make like a, a topic or group there for all these CI um, things because I think in mailing list in, is inadequate. We need something more permanent with sticky stuff, and um, that way we could like continue this discussion in more like email forum style. Would that make sense? Cool. Kevin, thanks for collecting all that information and for doing this. Have a good good lunch. Uh